No more, no more carbon fiber trekking poles for this guy right here. Find out my reasons why, as well as the trekking poles that I prefer, what are some of the features that I look for in a nice pair of trekking poles, and which ones you'll probably see me testing next out on the trail. So don't go away. <laughs> hikers on Bigfoot. I'm going to get right into the thick of things right now and talk about the carbon fiber trekking poles and my distaste for them. Why I'm no longer going to be using them at least uh, not any time in the very near or even distant future. My issue with carbon fiber poles is they break they break on me all of the time. Actually every time every single pair of carbon fiber poles that I have ever owned I have snapped. I've used REI co-op brand. I've used Black Diamond knock outdoors, and every single time it's been the same result. I've either snapped the pole, broken it in half, or they've shattered. Now most recently with the uh, knock outdoors vertex carbon cork trekking pole, I was on my second day of hiking. I was going over through, I think it was a little bit of a, a rock field that there was snow on top of, and I tripped on one of the rocks, fell forward, my trekking pole got lodged in between a couple rocks, and it snapped. This is what the pole that snapped on me looks like. And you'll see some splintering right here. And that's actually nothing that had to do with the actual snapping or breaking of the pole. In order for me to actually close this thing up, I uh, just basically shaved off a lot of a lot of that out, outer shell of the, of the carbon. My, uh, my pole actually broke right here. You can see just below where the button is. A couple things actually first. This is probably the weaker part of the pole. Right here where you do have that uh, connecting pin or that locking pin mechanism. Carbon fiber poles, the material that uh, carbon is, in the middle of winter, I was hiking somewhere around 10 degree temperatures. Carbon fiber is a lot more brittle. And when you are out hiking in extreme temperatures or even colder temperatures that I was hiking in, the carbon is going to be a lot more brittle. So the time of year that you're using carbon fiber trekking poles does matter. The colder that it gets, the more brittle these things are going to be, which will increase your chances of these things breaking on you. After I broke my pole, I was really disappointed because I really wanted to like these knockout door poles. I think they feel great. They're very comfortable. I love the cork handles. It's actually a feature that I'm going to have to have on all my trekking poles in the future because they are just so much more comfortable than EVA, the folding trekking pole, the Z-style type of pole. I have fallen in love with this design. I love it because when I'm hiking out there on the trail and I don't want my poles anymore, it's so easy for me to fold these things up and stuff them away on my, my side pouch. I usually stuff them on my left side. And at the drop of a hat, when I wanna pull them back out again, it's so convenient for me just to pull them right out of my side pocket. I don't have to take off my pack. It's so simple. Core candles and the Z-style type of poles, those are features that I have to have in my upcoming trekking poles. But back to the, the carbon fiber. With my style of how I use my trekking poles, I put an unbelievable amount of force on my poles, which is probably why I continue having issues breaking carbon fiber trekking poles. I think there are probably a ton of people out there that have absolutely no problems with using carbon fiber trekking poles and having them break. It really depends on the pole. It depends on your style, how you're using these poles. I beat the living crap out of poles. I can no longer use a carbon fiber material. I have to use an aluminum material. Every single major trekking pole company is going to be carrying a carbon fiber and an aluminum style trekking poles. Just like Knock Outdoors, they have an EVA and a cork trekking pole. They're actually getting rid of their EVA. And if you want a really decent pair of poles that are going to cost you next to nothing, I think it's $24.99, go to their website and you actually can score a pair of their EVA uh, aluminum poles for about 25 bucks. Now this last year I tested probably about half a dozen trekking poles out on the trail at various times of the year. To MT I used the Lakey Microvarial Cortec trekking poles. I loved the design again with the, uh, the folding trekking poles, a Z style type of pole, but their Cortec handle, which is a popular handle, I really didn't like. I liked when I was using it, but once I uh, had a chance to be able to use a trekking pole with a cork handle, which were the knockout doors, those were the first cork handles that I ever used. I don't think that I can move on from cork. I, I really loved the feel of it. So these probably won't be used in any upcoming adventures because uh, I really want to try to find and dial in the perfect pole for me. But these did perform well for me. They are aluminum. They were really strong. Lakey has great customer service 
And the nice part, and this is something that you want to consider when you're out there on the trail, is you can just about find in every single outfitter accessories for lakey poles. When I was on the AT, almost every single outfitter had all of the accessories and parts that you need for your lakey poles. Black Diamond was about half and half. Now, speaking of the parts and the trekking poles, something that is very important for me and, and my style of how I use my poles is that I can find the tips of the trekking poles and I can get them on the trail. I am putting a lot of force, as I said earlier, into the straps of my trekking poles, which basically drives the trekking poles further into the ground. Whether I have these small baskets or I've even used bigger baskets, that tip is going to sink into the ground. I have a difficult time sometimes being able to remove my trekking pole out of the ground as I'm trekking forward. So what happens then is my tip starts to bend. As you can see right here, this is actually one of my black diamond poles. This is actually the pole that I use on my Appalachian Trail through hike of 16. But you can see it starts to bend like this. And eventually, after about, again, 500 miles or so, it will look like this, where I actually break the tip right off my trekking pole. A lot of people will probably never even have to change their flex tips. But for me, I had to change this every 500 miles. Now the trade-off I had with alleviating the pressure that is going on my lower body and being able to go through the entire AT in 100 days without having any significant pain or injury was well worth changing those tips every 500 miles. So for me, what's really important is the accessibility that I have of finding the uh, parts so that I can replace my tips. When I was on the AT, it was sometimes difficult finding the tips for the trekking poles. I could always find all the parts for Lakey, but with Black Diamond, again, it just wasn't as accessible. So what I did the last half of the trail is I just purchased an extra pair of tips and kept them with me in my bag so that in the event I did have an emergency and I needed to change them out, at least I had them accessible, but obviously at a little bit of a weight penalty. So the purpose of me telling you all this is just to give you some ideas and some things to think about when you're choosing what brand of trekking pole that you want out there, there is going to be advantages with going with the bigger trekking pole companies because they have more accessibility out there. And a lot of the gear outfitters are going to be carrying the accessories to be able to do the field fixes while you are going through parts of the trail. Now having said that, what is just as equally important is that the trekking pole company is going to stand behind their product and be able to help get you fixed and get you back on the trail. Like I said earlier, Lakey has a lot of trail credit out there because they have fantastic customer service. Black Diamond, on the other hand, I've heard kind of spotty reviews about their customer service. But that's something that's really important because if you have a break out there with your equipment, your gear, you want to be able to have a company that's going to stand behind their products. For Knock Outdoors and Galad, I've talked to him a couple different times, which is the owner of Knock Outdoors. He will do whatever it takes to make you happy. If you had a malfunction with your poles, he will send you a part or if he needs to send you a new pair of trekking poles, I know he's done that. So I can confidently say that Knock will also be a company that you can trust that they are going to do whatever they need to to make you happy. Trekking poles that you're gonna see with me on the trail, number one, you'll see me out there with the Knock Outdoors aluminum cork trekking pole. I have a pair of those that I haven't had a chance to go out and try yet. Now, I probably wouldn't be bringing a pair of the Knock Outdoors trekking poles out on a long distance through hike of say 500 plus miles because of that issue with the pole tips and the accessibility of not having that. The next trekking pole that I'm going to be testing on, I actually just purchased, is the Black Diamond Alpine Series. I think it's the FLZ trekking pole. And the reason why I went with this one is because number one, it's got the Z style type of pole, so it, it folds. Number two, it's got the cork handle. Number three, it's aluminum. And number four, I do like Black Diamond. I've had a lot of great use with Black Diamond. The poles that got me through the entire Appalachian Trail were the Black Diamond Trail Pro Shock trekking poles. These things lasted the entire time. I had a couple issues at the very end, but I was able to manage, and these things stayed strong the entire time. These are built like freaking tanks. I wanted to go back with the Black Diamond, and I also like the flex tips. I can change them, I know how to change them, they're really easy to be able to change, and they're easy to get as well. So those are reasons why I'm going with that particular black diamond pole. Most important to me is number one, durability, first and foremost. Number two is comfortability, and number three is compactability. Now, if you open up the show notes below, I'm gonna have a bunch of trekking poles that I personally recommend, what I would personally be using out there. I'll also throw in a couple of the carbon trekking poles that have great reviews ones that I've heard good things about, maybe I haven't personally tried, but 
if that's something that you really want to go with, I'll have that in there below. So if you guys use trekking poles out there, what features are really important to you? Which poles do you use? What do you recommend? What's worked out well for you? Hikers, it's all the time that we have for today. If you found the information in this video useful or you learned something, please give me some love by liking the video, subscribe to my channel, stay tuned for many more sightings, and remember to always follow Bigfoot.